Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to a May 23rd edition of the MSP Initiative Live. And I am actually live in Orlando. Surprise, surprise, since, you know, every other event in, in the sandbox that we like to call it is in Orlando uh, at MSP GeekCon today. I'll go through some quick housekeeping, and then we will jump in with our friend Terry Hedden, who is joining us for the first time on this show. And we'll uh, talk shop a little bit. I think Terry has an interesting journey through IT and MSP land. And it'd be good to hear that. And then we'll talk shop a little bit. Um, here we go. MSPinitiative.com. This and every other session we've ever recorded since 2020 is here under sessions in podcast and video format. So feel free to go back, rewind, and you know, pick people's brains and call them out if they said something they didn't do. Just kidding, but not really. We have an event coming up in Denver called Community Minds. This is our first in-person event outside of block parties, which we'll talk about in a second. We're bringing speakers from around the industry uh, to workshop you through things, not just death by PowerPoint. It's going to be August 14th and 15th in Denver. Absolutely free to attend. There's no cost to join us other than to get there. Uh, you do have to uh, do a little bit of traveling. So uh, if you happen to uh, want to come out and learn, and we'll post all of the categories that we're going to be workshopping on legal and sales and lead gen and, you know, you know, operations and security and there's a bunch of topics that I think you'll be very interested to workshop in. Then we have our community block parties. We've done several this year so far. Um, uh, London, Prague. Uh, we had a little event last night here in Orlando uh, uh, with a bunch of uh, about 100 M uh, attendees or so uh, from this event. Uh, we do have DattoCon Dublin coming up. So if you happen to be traveling to Dublin at the end of June, uh, you're going to really love <laughs> this block party. We worked really hard on it. Um, believe it or not, um, Prague was probably a little bit easier than Dublin. But hey, it's all good. It'll be a good time. Then we have the MSP Community Boat Party. This is going to be in Fort Lauderdale. If you're headed to the Taylor Business Group Big Big or haven't even checked it out. Pretty cool event. Very peer groupish focused because that's what Taylor Business Group does. We're doing a boat party down the intercoastal. Um, pretty cool uh, setup. We did it last year. Uh, went really well. Excited for this year again. Then we have DattoCon Miami. So Florida, Florida, Florida. Uh, so if you're headed to DattoCon in Miami, uh, this is in September, I believe, or first week of October. Join us here. And then lastly is the one that just closes the year out. Last year in Orlando, we had the All-American Rejects. No joke. You've heard them on the radio. We're coming back. We're, we're going to be announcing our band soon. So this is the one that closes out the year, and it's the big one. We have some community offers, so uh, including Terry, who's on the line here. Um, we have some community offers from different uh, vendors that throw some you know, things out into the mix. So feel free to check those out. And lastly, just a simple industry calendar. I know a lot of people consolidate events throughout the industry. This was just us doing our own homework. And we said, let's just share what the results are. So, you know, anything that's missing from here, feel free to submit your own. And we'll try and get it into the calendar if it's not already just for visibility. And that is everything you need to know about MSP Initiative. Hopefully you followed all of that. And uh, yes. Now we're on to the good stuff. Welcome to the show for the very, very, very first time. Probably should have happened sooner. Terry Hedden. How are you doing today, Terry? Awesome, George, man. I'm glad to be here. And, you know, glad, uh, I just want to take a moment, man, to thank you for everything you do on the channel, man. This, this MSP initiative is awesome. The parties you throw are awesome. Um, you know, you're, 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 a good you're a good dude, and I appreciate what you do for the channel. No, I appreciate that. It's, it's definitely uh, the extracurricular stuff Terry can get. Interesting. I know we've talked about it in the past. There's no shortage of uh, stories. Um, even last night, every time I come into Florida, I always track rain with me. I don't know why. It's the black cloud effect. But uh, hey, you know, not a little water didn't hurt anybody, I think. And uh, yeah, it's been uh, it's been interesting times. But hey, uh, let's just say there's there's no lack of uh, hey, do you remember or you should have been there or man, I really wish we would have known that before time, but hey, that's part of the game. Um, so I think, you know, a lot of people come on this show and they, you know, they just, they think that everybody already knows their background 
And I find, Terry, that that's really often not the case. So I just sometimes like to go backwards in time to really understand, like, how did you get here, right? Like, what was your journey through technology land to where you are today? And that way, I think people get a better understanding of, like, your mindset, right? Like, do you understand how the sandbox works? And, like, are you coming in from the outside or did you start from the inside? And I think that really helps the story. Absolutely, George. Um, you know, uh, I, I think my background is a little bit different than the average uh, MSP uh, in the in the sense that I'm not technical. I've never built a server. I've never built a, a computer. Um, I'm not very technically inclined. Um, I I came in um, after undergrad and graduate school at the University of Florida. I'm more of an MBA type, so I started my career at Ernst and Young Management Consulting, where I traveled around the world uh, doing ERP implementations, helping with mergers high-level IT strategy for companies like General Electric um, and uh, Lucent Technologies and Wells Fargo and, and a lot of Fortune 100 brands. I worked in Central America, all over Europe and the Americas. And I love that lifestyle, uh, but it wasn't really conducive to a family. So I uh, decided to get out of that industry and got into the fashion industry, as you can tell with my incredible fashion sense. Uh, I spent a couple of years in the fashion industry uh, before uh, resigning that position. Moving back to Tampa Bay to start my MSP, uh, we uh, it was called in Infinity Business Systems, uh, and then we rebranded as Infinity Technology Solutions. Um, and we had quite a ride, man. We got we had no money. I started the company on twenty four thousand five hundred bucks, and we grew it to forty nine people in six and a half years. Um, and uh, you know, had a blast doing it. Um, I learned at that time that my claim, my my personal skill set was much less about operations and more about sales and marketing and uh, and I guess business uh, for a tech anyway. In the tech space, I, I was a little more business savvy than the norm. Um, so we achieved some pretty extraordinary things, ended up uh, being approached by the largest copier, uh, privately held copy equipment dealer in the country, uh, Zeno, and uh, selling the business in 2012. Uh, retired for a short while before uh, a name gentleman by the name of Chris Knowles in Atlanta uh, convinced me to help him build his MSP. So that gave birth to uh, what is today uh, Marketopia, uh, joined with my partner in life, Andra, uh, which came from Tech Data. So we joined together to, to build Marketopia into, you know, the largest demand gen engine in the channel. We've got 120 something people uh, in our offices in London and, and Tampa Bay, uh, helping hundreds of MSPs grow and hundreds of, uh, not hundreds, but dozens of vendors uh, grow into the channel as well. So uh, I didn't have quite the normal track into the industry, um, but you know it's been a, a wonderful experience, a wonderful life experience, very rewarding for me uh, personally as well as professionally. And and Marketopia was sort of a, it's a labor of love, it's a lot of work, but it, it's a way to give back to a community that so richly blessed me. And um, so it's an honor to help people like you and like uh, the people watching here achieve their goals at Mar um, at Marketopia. That's awesome. So, you know, I think, I mean, I'm, I'm at MSB Geek on right now, which is very engineer tech focused. Apparently half the people here have never been to a uh, industry event. It's their first time, which is wow. interesting. Um, Dave, I mean, or uh, not Dave, Terry. Terry, I think a lot of the people start off on the opposite side of where you came from, right? They're in the weeds, they're working inside of their business, they're doing the technical projects, they're trying to, you know, put all the wires together and unclog the, the spaghetti in the closet and all that jazz. And like, a lot of the people come from an owner led technical background, right? Yep. Yep. And like, I'm just curious, because like, for 20 damn years, maybe more, all I hear and like the top five things everybody always complains about that they think they need help with is sales and marketing, hiring, um, you know, like profitability, right? Like these are things that never have come off the top five, right? It's just standing things. Why is sales and marketing, Terry, so hard for a technical focused owner? You know, that's it's, it's one of those uh, uh, perspectives, I guess, that depends on the person that's giving it. I, I think sales and marketing is the easiest part of running an MSP. Um, and I think it's just because of who I am and my background, right? I think getting a lead is very easy. Um, coming up with a business model is very easy. Um, I, I got to, you know, about 
five million in managed services revenue in six and a half years without any money. I, I never found that to be a challenge. Um, and, but I think for the same reason that I struggle with operations and the technical side, um, people that come from more of that background find that to be the easy part. You know what I mean? So to them, the technology is easy and coming up with the, the, the tool set and the security stack and all the ch technical challenges are the easy part. And, and then the business side, the sales and marketing side is the, is the, is the hard part. I think it's just hmm. what you're good at and what your background is. And, and, you know, I think, you know, it's one of the beautiful things about the channel is that it's built on the backs of people who love technology, love business, love people. Uh, they lo not love business, but in a sense, they love the, the, the running of an MSP. They love customer service. They love helping people with technology. They, they geek out to, to, to the conference you're at there on, on the technical side of the business. Um, and, and they're good people. They're, they just, they're the people who deserve to win. The ones that focus on the customer and customer service and think that they can compete on customer service and, and be successful as an MSP. Those are the ones in my mind that deserve to win the most, you know? Um, but those are the ones that tend to struggle the most and, and it's quite unfortunate, but, um, you know, the good news is that there's a lot of solutions out there. There's a lot of great firms out there that can help people grow and achieve their goals. And, um, you know, I'm an honor. It's an honor to, to run one of them. Um, and uh, the reality is they can get the help they need and 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 and, and achieve their goals just like everybody else, uh, just by complementing their skill set with external expertise that's good at what they're not. OK, so let's go the other way. Chicken or the egg, right? Like, you know, they said, you know, the, the cliche and I've heard it a thousand times is if you're not growing, you're dying. Yep. OK, however, if you grow faster than the operation can handle, then there's a crack that occurs, right? Like if your customer doesn't pay their bill, doesn't matter, right? Like that's the, you know, kryptonite to every reoccurring business, you know, churn, right? Yep. So like, how does the MSP balance pushing on net new customers or growing their total reoccurring revenue base and maybe like trying to sell before they actually have the you know resources internally to actually meet the need. Okay, that's a it's a great question. I think it's one that's probably on top of a lot of people's minds with the economic situation that we're in right now. It just seems like a lot of un, un, unknowns and and uh, and that type of thing. Um, you know, I, I would say I'd answer it with two different kind of perspectives. One is, you know, I, I, I honestly I I only know how to grow as fast as my money allows me to grow. That's kind of my my way of doing business. There are pros and cons to that, um, as my team will tell you, uh, and, and my hairline will as well. I, I think there's pros and cons to that approach, but I, I never had any money. You don't have to have money to grow, right? That's one of the kind of the fallacies out there is you have to have money mm -hmm. to make money. And I don't agree with that at all. I started my MSP on 24,500 bucks and never got a, you know, I didn't have any long-term debt or anything like that. I just had kind of working capital lines of credit uh, to grow just like Marketopia. Marketopia grew 2,040% in a three-year span to be in the Inc. 500 um, without any money. You know, it's not like you have to have money to grow. The key is, is twofold. Wait, one on the service side, don't extend credit to your customers. Most MSPs try to be super nice and give 30, 60, 90 day terms and they're crappy banks. They're not well capitalized. They don't have the money to do that. I flipped that on its head because I never had any money. I got all my money up front. So if if I was uh, taking care of a customer in a $5,000 a month managed service account, of course, I'd sign a three-year contract. So I'd kind of mentally know that it, the money is there. But if I ever didn't get paid, I quit them on credit hold in five days. Like I didn't mess around. Like if you, if you didn't pay your bill, you you you're you can't get IT support anymore. And and the reason is 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 because customers will work you as hard as they can, um, and then eventually, if you if you let them to, they'll they'll kind of bend bend you backwards a little bit, you know. Well, they'll put you in control where you can't afford to fire them, and then all of a sudden, in every negotiation, you're you're working from behind because they owe you two three months of service. You can't let yourselves get into that situation. You got to be a disciplined principle led business owner that focuses on uh, getting paid in advance, much like your cable company does, make sure, much like your cell phone company does. Like so many companies get paid in advance. Stop trying to be a bank and start to be an MSP. And, and that, that's the first thing I'd say. So don't get yourself into that situation. But the other one is that, you know, most MSPs don't need salespeople to grow. 
you don't have to go out there and hire 20 people to grow. You don't have to hire one person to grow. Most people think that to grow, you have to, you know, build up this massive sales uh, team. But the, 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 the reality is that the, the MSP business owners that have that passion for customer service and, and love uh, and technology and love what it does for their customers, that passion is contagious. And, and they can sell their own business. They can sell that vision, that energy that they have. That passion is something that people are attracted to. So they can sell their own service. Now, they may need help building a proposal. And they may definitely need help getting in the door to meet with that prospect. Sort of the marketing lead generation side. They need to get help walking into the conference room. But once they're there, by and large, they're pretty darn good at sales. You know, that's the that's the fallacy is the most MSPs are like, oh, I suck at this. I'm not a good salesperson. And that's just not true 95% of the time. We hmm. believe in a principle-led sales model. Now that 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 there is still five percent that you know look like uh, Herman Munster and, and they 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 fumble over themselves and, and that that's they don't make a great impression and that passion for their business is not contagious, but that's a small fraction of the total. Most MSPs, if you walk them in the door. 10, 20, 30 times a month with net new prospects, they're going to close more than their fair share. And if they do that in such a way that they uh, sell a, a service profitably with long-term contracts, recurring revenue, it's not hard to build a successful MSP. It's a choice. It's a choice to start investing in the front end of their business, to trust their judgment when it comes to sales and marketing, and, and, and just close 10, 20, 30K RMR before you even start to hire a salesperson. You know, you don't need to go down that road and hire just to grow. You probably just need a lead and, and an opportunity to go out there and do what you do and, and to sell your company. And most MSPs are pretty darn good at that. Okay, I like that. I like that you don't need to like go and borrow a ton of money just to get started. That's great because let's be honest, a lot of people probably don't do that. Uh, they kind of start out of their basement or their trunk or their garage and they figure it out from there. Yeah. What do you, what, what, what do you believe? You know, if I put the sentence out there, if they need an MSP, they already have one. And so if they do, and you're trying to grow, then you're going to have to take the customers away from other MSPs. Is that a, is that a factual statement from your opinion? Or do you think that that's over dramatic Um, you know, I would say it depends on the situation, but, um, I would say don't be afraid of anything there. Like I have a, a here's a, a little nugget. We have a we have a promotion that we recommend our customers run, which is called bet you a hundred dollars. I'll bet you a hundred bucks I can get you out of that agreement. Okay, so if you're not happy, I'll bet you a hundred bucks I can get you out of that agreement. And the reality is, you may or may not be able to. You've never seen the agreement, but taking a look at it, there's often a, a clause in there that maybe isn't out for convenience or something that they can lean on or something that um, maybe is a failure that the MSP failed to provide. Um, and, and if not, you got a copy of your competitor's contract and, uh, only had to pay a hundred bucks for it. It's a pretty good deal. What I'd like to say is that the time to start talking to a new prospect is when they're under contract with somebody else. And people look yeah. at me like, what are you, what are you crazy? And, and the reason is this, if they have less than 90 days left on their contract, offer it free for the next 90 days. The reality is if you if you um, offer that, you're going to be able to get in the door and close the business before they even talk to any of your competition. You're going to start changing the game in the sense that you're not competing with anybody. You're in the door, close the deal three months before um, uh, anyone else was even invited to pursue. Whereas if you wait until the last minute, you, you might have two, three, four, five competitors, maybe some really formidable ones that are better, faster, or cheaper than you are. So I like people under contract. I also like the um, kind of playing the long game as an MSP. You know, we tend to start, MSPs have this, one of these challenges is, is that they tend to get into this monthly mindset where they're not thinking past today. The reality is nothing would be more powerful for an MSP business owner than a database of 500 companies and you know the expiration date on their managed services contract because you've built those relationships over years. All of a sudden you come in and we have customers that are like this now. They've been investing in this database. They've invested in the lead gen where they basically have this flow of leads that are not only, um, you know, qualified opportunities, but these are people that have heard from that MSP for years, regular calls, regular emails, regular newsletters, regular webinars, and they built a relationship. 
So they're the de facto leader coming into the competitive situation. And if you let people uh, have first three months free on a contract, all of a sudden it's you against you. You it's yours to win. And 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 you got to start playing the long game. Most MSPs don't don't factor in the value of a customer when they talk about the investment they're willing to make to get one. And that's why most MSPs struggle, in my experience, is that they're like, why would I give three thousand dollars promotion? to an MSP that only going to give me $3,000 a month, I'm going to lose my butt. And I'd say, you're exactly right in month one. What about if you think about how long you keep a customer over time, it might be for most MSPs, it's somewhere between five and 20 years. So you start factoring in 10, 15, 20 years of revenue. And all of a sudden that $3,000 is like a quarter of a percent of revenue, which everybody would give up to get a new customer. And if you build your contract with annual price increases and automatic renewals, all of a sudden, you can build yourself a revenue engine that is difficult to stop over time. You know, you start making more revenue, you make more profit, you reach those economies of scale um, milestones in an MSP's life. And the next thing you know, you turn around, your business is worth 5, 10, 15 million. One day, you might even have a, a beach house next to George, which is kind of the pinnacle that everyone's shooting for, um, you know, wherever he ends up, you know. So that, that's what I would say there. It's, it's really a choice. MSP can choose to grow, grow or choose to be fearful and let that let that determine their destiny. Okay, that's good advice. You know, uh, you, you brought in there, you know, what's a, I call a shark tank analytic, uh, cost of customer acquisition, right? What is the fair amount of, you know, and it could be not hard dollars, it could be time investment that, that has a value to it. It could be, your, you know, uh, a lunch and learn. It could be you're sending something in the mail and following up by phone, like, what in your experience is the average amount of the cost of customer acquisition, the amount of you know, perceived cost to ultimately land a customer? This is going to be probably a surprising answer, George. The most successful, profitable, and fastest growing MSPs have the highest customer acquisition costs. Why is okay. that? All right. So the reason is this. The ones that have the lowest client acquisition costs are the ones that, deter that base their business on word of mouth leads right? They're almost always lifestyle businesses. They don't really grow. They don't really make any money. The MSP business owner basically built themselves a job and they probably get paid less for that job than they would get paid if they went to work for someone else. On the high end, you have people who understand that if I'm a 10% profit margin and I keep customers for 10 years, that's 120 months. If I have a $10,000 um, managed services contract and I take $10,000 times 120 months, I start to get into real dollars. At 10% profit, all of a sudden, a new customer is worth $120,000. So if I have a 25% close ratio, then the average lead is worth $40,000. So a savvy business owner, a savvy MSP would say, wait a minute, what am I willing to give to get $40,000? It's darn sure not nothing. It's not 500 bucks or a thousand bucks like most amateur hour MSPs would use. The real successful MSPs say, listen, I'll pay five grand for a great lead because I know that for every lead I get and I pay 5,000, you're giving me 40,000 back, which means for every lead I get, I'm making 35 grand profit. I'm going to turn that crank as fast as I can. We have customers who get 40, MS, this is MSPs, 40 appointments a month with net new prospects. And their business is worth $35 million after five years in business. You don't have to um, think uh, big picture. You just start, to, you have to use math, simple math. What is a customer worth to me over their lifetime based on my profit margin as, 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 as I am today or what I expect it to be in the future? And then what's my close ratio? Multiply the two together. And that's the value of a lead. And the reality is the best MSPs are willing to pay far more per lead, which means they get more leads and they have a more consistent flow of leads, and therefore they grow faster and make more revenue, make more profit, and all of a sudden build MSPs that are worth 50 million and 100 million, not 500,000 and a million. You know what I mean? No, I mean, listen, I, I, I love that exercise right there because I think people think that there's some Excel spreadsheet formula they need in order to get to this number. To your point, right? Like understanding your profitability is like the foundation of this conversation then. Because if you don't understand what your net is coming out of an agreement, it's hard to decide what your cost of a lead is. Right. 
we, we have a fancy spreadsheet. Don't get me wrong. When we when we talk to a prospect, we'll show them an Excel spreadsheet. And the reason is not because it's some magical spreadsheet. It's just math. It's just basic multiplication. But most MSPs just don't think like that. They think in weeks or, or months or quarters or even contract years, but they don't step back and say, wait a minute, I'm damn good at service. I keep customers for 10 years. So if I get a customer who's giving me 100 grand a year and I keep them for 10 years, that's literally a million dollars in revenue. So if I have 10% profit, that's 100 grand in profit for every customer I get. I'm willing to spend a lot to get a customer. So you got to do that. Don't be that amateur hour MSP who lets fear drive their business decisions, who, who abandons logic in the server room and not bringing it into the boardroom right? Start making investments oh, yeah. in your success and turn the, the the dreams that you have for your business into expectations for, for it, right? It's a choice. Oh, okay. Okay. Hold on a second, Dan. If I'm not going out there to borrow money to build my MSB, if I'm growing within my own revenue stream, mm -hmm. how, what percent of my company do I allocate towards, you know, growth, right? Whether it's sales, whether it's marketing, whether it's lead gen, put whatever you want, you know, term against it. Yep. What is the correct formula to decide what that number is? I think that 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 answer is is dependent on the person, right? Um, how fearful are they? How how aggressive do they want to be? What's more important, revenue today or revenue in five years? I think that's a very personal question. Um, but what I will tell you is that. What everyone should do, in my opinion, is to determine what they want their dream to be, reverse engineer into what that's going to require from a new customer perspective on a monthly basis, figure out how many leads you need to get that. And that's the number that you need. That's your dream money, right? Is it five grand a month? Is it 10 grand a month? Is it 50 grand a month? What do I need to achieve my dreams? And that, that's, a, that's a number, a dollar amount. And then you go find that dollar amount, you know? And, and I recommend... Uh, look, taking a hard look at your service department. Are you overstaffed there because you think that the path to prosperity is paved with too many texts or more texts than you could possibly need? Or is it that um, you're charging too little and you, you've been, you, you haven't kept the prices up with inflation and therefore you're, you're robbing money from current customers to pay for the undercharged customers that you signed in the past? Or, um, or, or maybe you uh, Overinvest in, in in tools. You know, you start, you got crazy, you got crazy at IT Nation, and you started buying all these tools only to find out that they're not really being used. Find the money that you need to achieve your dreams, and then invest them in it. Invest the money in those dreams, and then turn those dreams into expectations. You can afford anything you want over time, but until you run a balanced business, every day is is filled with fear. Fear for the MSP. It's a crappy job to know that you're you're cutting it close every month, and 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 the reason is because most MSPs are afraid of losing a customer because they don't have a new one coming soon, right? They're they're That's afraid true. of the back end because they don't have a front end. So as soon as you start running a balanced business where you say, you know what, I, I, I'm not afraid. I'm going to pass on this price increase, right? George charged me another ten dollars a month for my VoIP product, the the B VoIP, uh, which is a great a great technology, great company that you have a price increase you passed on, but too many MSPs will, will try to absorb that cost, right? And, and, and they won't pass it on to the, to the reseller or they'll give their tech a raise, but not give their customer a price increase that, that, that more than makes up for it. And all of a sudden they find themselves in a paralysis of fear where they're afraid to lose a customer because they do that, they won't make payroll. What you got to do is to step back and get out of the insanity and start generating leads and bringing in new customers so that you're not afraid anymore. You know that, yeah, you might lose that customer. And if I try to pass on that 10% price increase and they walk, it's not the end of the world because I got a new one coming in in a week or two, right? I'm going to replace that revenue with a net new one. And that will give you the confidence to pass on those price increases. That will give you the confidence to bring the security solutions and, and cross-sell, upsell into voice into those customers to increase the revenue per customer and really start to multiply the profit that you, your MSP brings in. When you can pass on price increases, you cross-sell VoIP and other technologies into your existing customers, your revenue from existing customers will go up. You bring in net new customers, and all of a sudden you find yourself in a 10, 20, 30, even 40 points of net profit in your MSP. Instead of letting fear drive it, you start having your dreams drive your, your decisions and not your fear, right? Um, and I, I see that too often, and, it, and, it's, and it's a shame because... It feels like the people who deserve to win the most, the ones who care about their customers the most, 
are the ones that get themselves in that bind where every day is they're living in fear. And they wake up one day when they're 55 or 60 years old and they've, they're starting to have health problems only to turn around and realize that their business isn't worth anything. Do what it takes to achieve your dreams and, and have that defined timeline so that you're on track to achieve them when you want to achieve them. And, and again, try to try to live in the Virgin Islands uh, next to, uh, to Georgia's uh, catamaran. That's funny. Um, all true things, because all the people, I mean, there, there's definitely, uh, I don't know, if, you know, a lot of owners in the MSP sandbox, I like to call it, are starting to get a little bit older, right? Like we're not seeing as much net new young people coming in for some reason. So like now these people are getting into their, you know, 50s and 60s. And then they look back and they're like, well, you know, and I'm sure you've seen this, right, Terry, because you work with a lot of people, but, you know, they've overvalued their business. They go to see what the market will bear and they find out that, you know, they completely didn't have things in a place where there is a value at all. The value right. zero. And back to the comment of they've created a job for themselves. Yeah, I, am, I, I believe that to be the case. And time doesn't, you can't buy it back. Nobody's figured out how to go backwards and, and, and rewind. But, you know, the, I think the big challenge in the industry, especially for, you want to call them the smaller guys, lifestyle guys, whatever, is that they don't understand how the business is valued. And I think that once they get the math, maybe that's that big spreadsheet you were talking about, and they understand, you know, what the numbers are and what they need to do to position their business to actually have the valuation they're looking for at some point down the line, there's, they're basically flying blind. Yep. I mean, so that's definitely a concern. Moving on, what are the trend, like, you know, from a, what are the top things that MSPs who are in the growth mind uh, kind of mode are, are leading with now? Um, is it, I know security is very, you know, sexy topic, I guess is the right word. Uh, so that's definitely out there. Um, there is a little bit of, Hey, you know, we're in a work from anywhere world. I'm hiring from all over the planet, the country, whatever. I need to be able to like, not worry about a physical one location you know, situation. So I guess that's still out there. And then there's still, I guess, just, you know, this kind of, ever growing just refresh process right like technology never stops and stays where it is at some point things need to be reset so like those are things that come to the top of my mind but like what are you seeing people winning with today you know i, I think to your point it, it 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 changes the time right um i think today right now um the two most top of mind um ways that people get leads today is either competing on the opportunity to save money or fear, uncertainty, and doubt around security. Those are the two primary ways to win. Now, to me, they're one and the same. And, and that, that may sound a little odd, but in my experience, the hard part is getting in the door, right? Is getting the customer to meet with you, getting the prospect to meet with you. That's the hard part, right? And mm -hmm. a lot of people try to stick to their guns and say, oh, I only want to I only want to you know work with clients who are 25 seats and up because I don't I don't want to I don't want to have a, a minimum customer size of 2500. The reality is most companies MSPs are struggling to to deliver on the promise of MSPs. So if you can get in the door and do an assessment, take a look at the the, the risks that they're facing from a cyber liability perspective. Uh, you start taking a look at the the downtime that they're experiencing from from uh, inadequate uh, investment in infrastructure or, or poor maintenance or just bad customer service from their IT provider. Once you get in the door, you'll find something and you're able to empower the salesperson with the opportunity to figure out what those hot buttons are and then try to sell based on partnership. So getting in the door is, is security, maybe price, but once you're in the door, it's about people buy from people they like, people buy from people they trust. And, and MSPs have to get good at establishing those relationships, building that trusted advisor status. So when a prospect um, uh, gives them the time to, 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 to listen and learn and, and to, to explain what, what they've found and, and make recommendations, the prospects are more apt to follow them. And I, I think if, if mo mo more MSPs would be open-minded to marketing things in different ways, they'd be more successful. No customer wants to buy any technical product. 
they don't care at all. Most MSPs are like, oh no, you know, they gotta, I, I gotta sell, you know, Bevo if I gotta get in the door. No, what they want is efficiency, community, uh, 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 profitability, success, less risk. Uh, they want the business benefits that all these technology solutions come with. And the best person to explain that is the salesperson, right? Get them in the door, let them do what they do, put them in a position where the, the prospect is across the table and listening. And, and if you can do that, you'll, you'll find opportunities to win. You'll find opportunities to add value. You can get your uh, dollar per user up in the two, $300 range. If you just listen and start selling what people truly need to run their business and, and, and educate them to the risks that they face and the opportunities that, that to improve efficiency and collaboration and profitability that some advanced technologies like, like VoIP um, bring to them. You know, that's the reality. Um, stop being so paranoid about what it takes to win and start focusing on what it takes to get in the door and then let the truth win uh, once they're there. That I mean, that's pretty good advice. So from a where's your best bang for your buck angle, um, is it still hammering the phones? Is it still driving people to an in-person event? Is it mailers? Is it AdWords? Is it Facebook ads? Is it uh, some guy on the street with the going out of, you know, uh, business furniture sign? Like, what, what, where do I spend my money? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a, it's a really good question. And, and let me start off by telling you where it's not. Where it's not is going cheap. I, I see a lot of people do long-term damage to their brand and affect the, the global perception of the, the quality of their company because they skimp when it matters most. Crappy marketing is worse than no marketing at all. Crappy lead generation using people who prospects can't understand on the phone can do far, far more damage to your reputation than you could possibly imagine. And one of the travesties I see that uh, out there is that MSPs are being penny wise and pound foolish. They'll save a couple grand a month on their lead generation program and cost themselves millions and millions in reputation that they'll never recover from reputation damage. So, so that's not that's not where it is. Going cheap is not how you win. The reality is that it's hard to get a lead. It's expensive to get a lead, but a lead is worth so much to an MSP, right? The average value of an appointment for an MSP is anywhere from $4,000 per lead to $40,000 per lead, depending on what you sell uh, to that uh, MSP and how long you keep the customer over time. So be willing to invest what it takes to generate appointments. Don't get uh, so focused on saving money that you lose sight of what is really important, which is the return on investment from that, ex that, that, that investment, right? The return on the ROI. That's what matters. What you spend is irrelevant. What you make net your, your revenue in versus the expense out, that's what's important. So you can get a whole lot richer spending $2,000 on an appointment you make 10 grand on than you do spending uh, $200 on an appointment you never got. You know what I mean? And so many MSPs just lose sight of that. They, they go with uh, solutions based on price and price alone and find out it doesn't really generate any appointments at all. In fact, uh, you know, most MSPs have approximately zero to one net new prospect appointment a month. And it's going to take a whole long time to achieve your dreams at, at that rate. And in fact, most MSPs, they get up to about a million in sales and just level off and then start to trail over time. And it, it's unfortunate, but um, invest what it takes to achieve your dreams. Okay, so the answer is, it's gotta be different, but depending on what you're trying to accomplish, working backwards from the goal, right? I get it. it but if I wanted to see, like if you were to, somebody came to you today and said, Terry, um, this is, I got, I got to find out a number of cash in my hand. Right. Um, if, you, if you were to shoot a gun into the dark, you know, what's the best chance that this do these dollars in my hand come back to something more than I burned it? Yep. Uh, what, what would you say? What would you take a shot on? I, I, would, I would, let me give you a short term and then I'll do a long term. In short term, I would say have a great website, cross sell okay. and upsell uh, services into your existing customer base and invest in tele lead generation. That's the most surefire way to get an appointment is to literally call a thousand different prospects a month to get five good qualified sales appointments a month, right? That, that's the starting point. Long-term, it changes a little bit, right? Lead gen is important, but you can start using digital marketing tactics. 
like pay-per-click and social uh, uh, spending money on social uh, pay-per-click and Google and Bing and that type of thing. That's important over the long term. Branding matters a lot more over the long term. So getting your message out there um, and with email marketing and things like that. Um, but um, at the end of the day, leads come from two places. Well, three. Word of mouth is a great form of lead. It just doesn't scale. Eventually, it doesn't even keep up with attrition. Second point is digital marketing, pay-per-click, Google AdWords, social pay-per-click, things like that. And then third is telelead generation, email, social media without digital spend, um, SEO. Those take a long time to start paying off. It doesn't mean you don't invest in them, but just know that you're making investments in your 2024 revenue, not your 2023. Whereas you can start getting appointments held with net new qualified prospects in a week or two if you embark on a tele campaign. So it's not hard to see that ROI. And that gets you started, close some business, reinforce, uh, reinvest the revenue until your monthly lead count gets where you need it to, to achieve your ultimate goal. If you know you need 10 a month, you should keep reinvesting until you get to 10 a month. And then hmm. uh, and then all of a sudden the dreams that you had over the long term become expectations because you're getting what you need to achieve them. That's interesting. So a lot of people think that you know, the whole dial for dollars thing is like long, long in the tooth and it doesn't work seems like you don't that's not where you you're coming from it does work um it works fabulously well uh we have nearly a hundred people doing that at making you know two hundred thousand dials a month uh we generate more managed service appointments than i think pretty much all of our competitors combined at this point and um it works incredibly well nothing replaces a conversation Right. And and the reality is a handshake might be better, but it's a whole lot less efficient to go door to door than it is to pick up the phone. I'm a firm believer in, in outbound lead generation for MSPs. It's kind of a lost art for salespeople. They won't do it. They'll do it poorly or they'll pretend that they did it. Um, you've got to reach out and talk to people, build relationships over time. And the most efficient and powerful way to do that, undoubtedly, is picking up the phone, um, especially in the short term. In the long term, content marketing, SEO, there's a lot of things that you can do to build a relationship over months or years. But if you want a, a, an appointment today, um, picking up the phone and making you know 100 to 200 calls a day, that's how you uh, get the quickest ROI, especially if you're good at it. Okay. So listen up, folks. It is working. Let me ask you this, Terry. Like, where, how do you, I mean, I assume some exercise has to happen then on, you know, like you have to generate the list of people that you're calling, like, but first, before you can even generate the list, isn't there a conversation about, well, what's your, you know, your profile of customer that you're going at? Um, that, that's a really good question. And something that we have invested a lot of time and energy in, in doing here, um, because it's, it's an Achilles heel. One of the reasons that a lot of MSPs struggle is they start raising their minimum size. And what they start to do is to uh, quickly, uh, one of the first things you'll hear them say is, I, I only want clients that are 10 and up, 10 employees and up, or 20 and up. What they don't realize is that nine, over 90% of all companies in, in the country have less than 10 employees. 78.7% .7 have less than five employees. So as soon as you say 10 and under, you've eliminated 10 and over, you've eliminated over 90% of all the prospects in your market. If you say 25 and over, you've eliminated 98%, 97% of all companies in your market. You've taken that pond that you have out there and started to shrink it down. Um, you know, it's really important to, to identify what we call them MVP or minimum viable prospect. Everybody wants a Fortune 100 client. Everyone wants a 50 seat and up. Everyone wants a 100 seat and up. That's easy. And I can promise you that every marketing company that can get you one of those leads will, right? They're, you're going to have to invest a lot to get them because it's hard to get their attention. But everybody wants those customers and you'll be competing with everybody out there to win them. But try to really figure out how to run a business where you can sell to the masses, if you can sell to companies that are five and up and be profitable doing it, there's a whole lot more five-person companies than there are 25-person companies. Oh, I don't know, like 80 times as many, right? So build your business model to where you can make, make a living, make a good profit selling into the masses of the market. 
And, and so many MSPs are so obsessed with their cost per user calculator that they fail to realize that that's a variable expense, that you might have a $100 cost per user or $150 cost per user at 25, but at five seats and up, maybe it's a 250 per user. So you go to a customer that has five people and say, hey, listen, uh, the good news is um, it's $1,000 for your four-person environment, and you're going to be able to hire up to six more people and not have an, an, an increase in price. You know, start to come to market and make a living selling into the masses of the market, um, but really identify what the minimum viable prospect is for your business. Not what you want, but what you can close. Not what you dream about, but what you can find in your community and 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 not in uh, in, in small volume, but hopefully find a situation where there's five, 10,000 prospects in your market that you can go out there and, and capture and win and not try to shoot for the same top 100 that every, every, uh, enterprise IT companies trying to fight after. No, that I mean, those statistics are pretty eye-opening, to be honest. I had no clue the second you got to 25 employees, you've just taken 98% of the, the, the pool down. I mean, like, I had no idea. But, Terry, aren't, you know, and again, I don't know what your advice is, and you work with a lot of MSPs, but, like, once you start going after the, five and 10 and 15 ish employee companies, don't you have a struggle on, you know, signing them, to, signing them to anything more than a month to month, or, you know, maybe your, your costs, you know, your, the, what you can bill them for tends to, to hit a glass ceiling a little bit faster. Like, do you not see those struggles? I, you know, I, I would tell you that depends on the talents of the salesperson. I, I, I think the answer to that is no. There are a lot of five-person law firms that would benefit from a security stack that costs 100 bucks a user by itself. Um, you have to um, basically have a compelling value proposition for whatever it is you want people to buy. If you want to compete on price in the managed services industry, prepare to make no money at all. Prepare to not be in business in five years because there's always someone willing to sell it for cheap, cheaper than it costs to do it. What, what you got to do is to go into people with the right solution for their business. And the right solution needs to include you and you need to make a living doing it. So don't be afraid to charge what it costs you to be profitable taking care of a customer. If you are, are good at what you do and you're good at, at getting appointments and getting into prospects that have issues with their current company, they're going to expect to pay more than they're paying today. Only amateur hour salespeople try to match the price of the solution that doesn't work. Right. If someone is, if you're in there talking to a company, what they have does not work. So trying to cut the cost or match the price of what doesn't work is completely illogical. No one buys the cheapest car out there at a car dealership. Uh, people buy the one that they that gives them the most value. And 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 what you have to do as an MSP is to start getting better at talking to more prospects so that you get more numbers and then starting get better, invest in your, your own sales acumen, your proposal templates, things like that, so that you can do a better job of conveying the true value of what you bring. And, and if you do a good job, you'll find that the, the, the elasticity is much less than you think it is. People will pay for peace of mind. People will pay to work with people they like. People will pay to work with people they trust. And people will pay what it takes to do it right and give you a comfortable profit at the end of the day so that you can secure your family and, and build your business and, and stop trying to compete on price and be the low cost leader because there's no one that's going to beat uh, the average trunk slammer or the technology vendors going direct. You have value as an MSP, wrap your value around their products and services and start selling solutions that the, that the clients see value in and are willing to pay for. Okay. So like, Generally speaking, I know the size of the customer and the maturity of the, of the MSP could be varying here, but what's the workflow, right? So like, let's say your firm creates, you know, a, a, the profile of who, you know, to go after with your help. You go out there, you're dialing, you're trying to get these appointments set up. And then let's say the appointment gets booked, you know, maybe it's a calendar booking link or whatever, right? And then like, at that point, somebody could be the owner, or whatever, somebody from the MSP has got up is it you know it could be zoom i i would think if you can get in you know in person i would walk in the door in my opinion but so you, so you go to this appointment and then like is the whole free network assessment angle at that like what what happens then what's the workflow it's, it's a good question i think i think COVID has changed it a little bit in the sense that um, there's almost an extra step in the sales process that didn't used to be there 
Um, people have got in this res in this screening mentality where there there's an initial conversation to see if it's worth their time. In the past, it was whether it was worth their time to get in an in person meeting because it was a life or death situation potentially, right? So so the reality is, in, in, in my opinion, there's an initial conversation where you're 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 trying to not get disqualified. You're never disqualifying the prospect. You're trying to just get in person. You get in person, and the first conversation should never be tech. You shouldn't even bring a tech to that first conversation. You need to have a business conversation. Understand the drivers of the decision, who the decision makers are, what they're doing with uh, their technology, what they're happy with and dissatisfied with, and then the and really understand the business why. Why should they hire you? You've got to get that. And justify the technical why to come in and do that technical assessment. And yes, I am a fan of doing it free or actually building it into the cost of your managed service agreement. And 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 and, and therefore you'll ha start having the business why and the technical why. You add those together, and all of a sudden you have a very compelling reason why they should go with you because you've listened and you've learned. And when you're giving examples of the services you offer, you can speak in words that mean something to the prospect. And when that happens, they start to see the value of what you do increasing relative to your competition, which logically would make them be far more willing to pay a premium for it. So you have to invest in the sales process. Slow down. Let it take multiple meetings. Uh, try to, in my opinion, it's like a four to five step sales process right now for managed services. And savvy MSPs take an, one to two weeks to get that done. And uh, and build a relationship and 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 use uh, advanced sales tactics to kind of quickly build that relationship so that when it comes down to presenting the proposal, they trust you. You've listened to them, okay. you've learned, and you've used words that mean something to them during the sales presentation. So they're far more likely to sign on the dotted line and turn it into a three or five year managed services customer. So this whole process, right? These three to five meetings, then there's a proposal presentation. And then maybe there's a little bit of negotiating somewhere in there. Cause you know, everybody tries to now, like, is that a 30 day process for 60, 90, a year? I don't know. How long? The answer is yes. To all those things, George, a lot of customers that you lose today, you can get them in a year. I would say that our longstanding customers, the people who have been with us for a number of years, have more sales from leads we got them last year than this year because they built and invested in that relationship. So um, I, I, you and I are competing for a client. I lose to you. I then continue to build that relationship over time. I know that your contract ends in May. So I'm going to reach out to that customer in February, offer free services through May, right? And, 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 and displace you a year after I got the actual lead. There are some situations where it's a burning platform, right? Their IT person quit, their MSP failed them, their infrastructure's down. Those you might be able to sign in, in a day or a week. And then there's everything in the middle. I think the average MSP sales cycle, uh, is, is it varies based on the caliber of the sales professional, anywhere from 30 to 90 days. But what I will tell you is be open to all of those scenarios. Just win. Stop trying to win today and focus on winning winning whenever it takes. Whatever it takes, as long as it takes. Win. Win today, win next month, win next year. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, your goal is to get more than your fair share of customers in your market so that you can have more than your fair share of revenue and you can have a boat even bigger than George's in the Virgin Islands. That's what it, every MS. Yeah, I, I, I got to go, go find this boat. I don't know where it is. Um, all good, man. Uh, Bruce, I love your quote. It says, we care too much about our clients not to charge them the right price. Otherwise, we can't give them good service. Isn't that just the uh, yin and yang of the whole story right there? I love that, Bruce. It's a fantastic quote. Um, Terry, how do people find out more about your company, your program? Obviously, you've been in the MSP space for a long time, and you cater to MSP land. You got your group here in, in Tampa, which I'm very proud of Tampa. By the way, great place to live, I'm sure. I spent enough time down here to realize that uh, makes me makes me want to spend a little bit more time in Florida than Philadelphia at times. I digress. I didn't say that. Uh, and then you have the group over in London, right on the other side. So like, yep. sounds like you have you know kind of like a global thing going. But like, how do they find out more information? The easiest way is definitely to to to, to go to marketopia.com, m-a-r-k-e-t-o-p-i-a.com, or reach out to me on LinkedIn. Um, I'll be happy to set you up with a conversation about your your growth, your dreams to see if uh, Marketopia might be a fit for you. And we'll be honest with you. If you're not, we'll tell you where to go. 
uh, based on your budget, your goals. If we're not a good fit, we'll, we'll help you uh, introduce you to, to someone who might be. And uh, our goal is to help everyone who's in, prepared to invest in, in what it takes to achieve their goals and, uh, and, and, and help as many people as we can. That's why I came out of retirement. That's why I'm on this webinar. Uh, and that's to make a difference in the community. Everyone deserves to win and everyone deserves to be successful and achieve their dreams. We all work really hard. We should bear the fruits of that labor over time and, and have a very comfortable retirement, hopefully uh, uh, at, at the place that you dream about it being. Quick question on the way out the door, because we, we, I argue this number all the time with uh, a lot of the, uh, the industry talking heads. How many MSPs are there? That's a, the word MSP or the acronym MSP means different things to different people. How I would define MSP are people that have recurring revenue that's more than 50% of their total revenue. If you define it that way, there's probably somewhere around 40,000 in the United States, maybe 30,000, um, and, and probably at least double that worldwide. Um, and if, if you base it by a, a looser definition uh, of an MSP, which is people who sell recurring revenue services um, in addition to other services, that number could easily get more than 100,000 in the US alone. So it just depends on how you define MSP. And, and what I recommend to vendors who are asking that question is to figure out what the MSP needs to have in terms of skill set and maturity to sell your solution. Because there's a whole lot more VARs that want to be MSPs than there are MSPs with a million dollars a month in recurring revenue. So figure out where you need to be on that maturity continuum and then figure out a campaign to go target those people. But ideally, build your partner program and your product in such a way that even um, wannabe MSPs are good at selling it because that is the market. There are so many MSPs um, that maybe don't have a million a month in recurring revenue, but have a dream of getting there. And there's a lot of solutions like yours, George, that help them do that. Um, so if you build a partner program that empowers them with sales and marketing uh, uh, capabilities to get more leads and close more of those, those sales, and then, of course, the technical product and, and service training that you need to give them to implement and support it, you'll start to build a winning partner program that can help help uh, help your, your channel uh, succeed and, and ultimately help get the vendor's revenue where they want it to be. It's, it, you know, it's interesting. Every time I ask that question, I hear it could be 150, could be 80, could be. I was like, everybody just has this different number. I, I, I was just curious why it's such a wide range. But I think you, you helped us understand that. The definition changes the number. Yep. Yeah, 100%. Appreciate your feedback on that. Terry, can't wait to uh, connect with you. I'm sure we're going to see you many times this year because uh, everything's in Florida, Terry, and you're already in the mix, right? So um, looking forward to it. This session was recorded. We're going to have it posted on mspinitiative.com under sessions. Um, reach out to Terry. Sounds like he's willing to help you on like anything that, you, you know, like even if it's not something he can sell you per se or service you on, He'll at least point you in the right direction as a guy who built an MSP, sold it, and I've probably seen a lot of other people have to build their companies up and sell them. I mean, you're in a unique position where, you know, you, you have access to somebody that's not guessing. I think there's some value there, guys. So reach out to Terry and I'd be surprised if you don't hear back from him. Awesome. Thank you, George. I appreciate, appreciate you guys. You got it, guys. Have a good one.